Paige Sevier, your natural makeup specialist for women over 30. And if you just got your all-in-one 3D foundation palette, let me walk you through step-by-step step exactly how to apply it, what tools to use, how to prep your skin, literally every little detail and thing you need to know about how to use this awesome makeup. Real quick, if you are my customer and if you have any questions or issues, please know you can always text me and always reach out to me. I am here to help you and be a resource for you. So don't ever hesitate to reach out. All right, grab your makeup, prop up your phone, grab a mirror. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we dive into applying our makeup, <laughs> the first thing is skin prep. This is so important. Now your skin prep is going to depend on your skin type, but in general, I always recommend using an oil serum and a moisturizer and a sunscreen. A lot of moisturizers out there and even sunscreens contain silicone or a form of silicone and that can sometimes interact with how the makeup sits on your skin. So if you find that the makeup isn't wearing well or it's not blending into the skin or it's sitting on top of the skin or feeling greasy or oily, those all might be indicators that the silicone in your other products are interacting with the makeup. Now I'm not saying you can't ever use silicone based products, I'm just saying in the very beginning as your skin adjusts to the cream, try to skip out products that contain silicone and then once your skin is adjusted, you can add them back in. Okay, one last thing, let's talk about adjustment period. An adjustment phase usually lasts anywhere from two to three weeks, especially if your skin is not used to the amount of hydration that comes with the cream. And especially if you're someone who has oily skin, oftentimes oily skin types are oily because they're being dried out from powders and liquids. And so they overcreate create um, the sebaceous glands will over produce oil in an effort to hydrate the skin. Now I recognize that's certainly not all oily skin types, but some. So a lot of times I get feedback from my clients saying that, oh my gosh, my skin is less oily now that I'm using a cream. One last thing to mention with the adjustment period is you may experience some breakouts. That's totally normal. All right, let's talk about how to set up your compact. All right. So one question I get all the time is how am I supposed to know what color is what once I put it into my compact? Because I realize that the tins, although they have the name on the back, um, once they're in there, you can't see what they are, right? So I recommend setting up your compact in order of application. This makes it the easiest to remember. Okay, so you can go to your color match email that I sent you, put in your contour first because we're going to usually apply contour first. Then the next color is going to be your darkest shade, which is your color correcting highlight. Okay, and then your mid-tone or base or main shade is right here and then your brightening highlight, if you got those three highlights I recommended, okay? Then you can add in your bronzer, this is a brow color, and then I usually have my lip and cheek colors and an illuminator off to the side. This is the second level of my compact, and I love to put all of my eyeshadows and my powders in here. All right, and then this is my brow wax. Let me show you how to use this brow wax because it is a hard brow wax, it's meant to be hard, and you need to activate it first. Start by taking a spoolie and some setting spray, and you're just gonna spray your spoolie with your setting spray, okay? And then you're gonna go into your brow wax, and you're just gonna swirl it around until you start to see the spoolie pick up the wax. From there, you're gonna run it through the brows really well. It'll even look kind of soapy a little bit. <laughs> and you're just gonna coat the brow hairs really generously. It should be a little wet. Same thing to this side. I'm gonna give it a minute and wait for that wax to dry in your brows. If you just keep brushing while it's still wet, it's never gonna dry and set it in place. And once it's almost dry, you can take your spoolie again and you can start to shape them. And you'll notice it'll feel a little bit more stiff and that's how you know that it's working. So once they've been shaped and they've dried, I like to take my fingers and then just press that wax in and these brows will not budge all day, I promise. Finally, let's dive into application. We are going to start with the blush and bronzer brush. This is totally optional. This is not a necessary step. This is simply a step I like to do if I'm trying to even out my skin tone or add a little bit of warmth all over. So I'm gonna take my Bella bronzer with the large end of the blush and bronzer brush Barely tap it in because it's so pigmented. You need the tiniest amount of product. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add some color where I need color. This is also a really great method for someone who has melasma or um, redness. If you have a lot of redness, I actually recommend using palm bronzer. It's really great for that. It can help really tone the red. And you're just gonna apply it all over. Most of us tend to have a lighter jawline and also a lighter neck than pigment on the face. So you can even just take it down the neck and warm everything up there. 
All right, let's move on to contour. We are going to use the detail brush. I find this brush to be the best brush for beginners. It makes contouring a breeze. And this is our contour shade. I'm using a color called Astoria. And you'll notice that the contour is a more stiff or dense consistency than the highlights and even the bronzer. And it is purposely made that way so that you do not over apply the contour. So instead of like pushing and swiping into our contour, we are simply just going to tap and press like so until you see the bottom of your brush loaded. Now, the creams can get cold, especially if it's winter time. So all you need to do is just take a blow dryer, run it over and it will warm them right up and allow you to get a little bit more product on your brush. Let's dive into where should you be applying this contour. So we're gonna take the large end, we're gonna locate the top of our cheekbone, sorry, <laughs> the top of our ear, and it's usually about right where the, the cheekbone starts. And we are just going to contour right on top of the cheekbone. One quick thing to note, if you have a lot of discoloration going on in your contour area, go ahead and apply your color correcting or your base highlight shade there first. Then you can go ahead and stipple your contour over the top. Another little tip is to make sure you do not bring your contour too low. You don't want it by the corner of your mouth and you want it outside your smile lines. Let's chat about how to contour for your face shape. All right, I get this question a lot. And really all you need to know is whether you want to contour a little bit more horizontally or vertically. So if you have a long, skinny or narrow face and you want to create more width around the cheekbones, you're going to contour a little bit more horizontally, almost like a little check mark or a push-up bra underneath the cheekbone. If you're trying to slim out or narrow the face, then instead of going horizontally and down, you're going to go more vertically this way. Again, making sure that you don't go past the center of the pupil of your eye and you stay outside your smile lines. When it comes to contouring the forehead, I always tell people to imagine that you have this little triangle that goes from the arch of your brow to the center of your forehead to the other arch of your brow, okay? This area right here is going to stay empty. We're not going to add any contour there and we're just going to contour around that imaginary triangle. I always start kind of up at the hairline, press the contour into the hairline, and if you have um, a lot of distance between your temple and your brow, you can go ahead and bring it down here a little bit. For me, I'm more narrow, so I'm going to stay away from contouring that. All right, we're just messing with the lights and shadows on our face, and contour is just going to help bring definition and dimension where we want it. And now we've got this invisible little triangle here. Another tip is to always start your contour at the back of your cheek and then bring it forward. You don't ever wanna start here and then go back because then you're gonna get a lot of product right here at the base of your cheek and it can sometimes look muddy or dirty. When it comes to nose contour, it can be a little tricky. So what you wanna do is just load the sides of your detail brush and we're almost just gonna stamp on little lines on our nose, okay? A lot of times people will have a tendency to bring their contour like way out here on the side. Um, that's just gonna make your nose look bigger. <laughs> so what you wanna do is you want to bring your contour on top of the bridge of the nose, okay? So I'm on the bridge and I'm just kind of stamping on these little straight lines. It'll take a minute to teach your hand this muscle memory, okay? So you should have a pretty thin line of light down the center of your nose, and then you're just gonna come and create a little V, a V at the base of your nose. And then I like to just take the flat end and I'll just kind of blend it inward like this and we'll clean everything up in just a little bit. If you're struggling with a larger contour brush, you can try something like the smudge brush. This end right here is really good for control controlled contour. Let's move on to color correcting. So this is where you're going to use the darkest of your highlight recommendations, your color correcting highlight, and you're going to use this color first. You're going to use this darkest color on acne spots, dark under eyes, redness, etc. When you're dealing with delicate areas like under eyes or small areas like acne spots, I like to use the small side of the multitasker brush. And we're gonna go in with our darkest shade, our color correcting highlight. And with the under eyes, you're just going to target where that darkness is. We want to use as minimal amount of product as possible, especially if you have fine lines or texture. 
This is going to make sure that we don't experience creasing under the eyes. If we take a heavy brush and we try to correct under the eyes first with a heavy dense brush, then we're going to experience some creasing because we're gonna have way too much product. So we're just gonna go ahead and cover up these little spots. Once those spot treated areas have had a little bit of time to soak into the skin, you can flip over to the larger end of the multitasker and you can just kind of press that color into the skin. It'll also help just to remove any excess before you go ahead and apply your main foundation shade over the top. For some of you, your recommendation is noticeably darker than your skin tone and that's okay. Don't fret because once you go ahead and start applying your base foundation shade, it's going to neutralize the warmth. So that's why I suggest using a very small hand, a very small amount, and just following that technique of kind of spot treating, pressing into the skin, and then you can go ahead and move on to the base foundation shade. So I love to recommend the buff brush for more medium to full coverage. If you want less or lighter coverage, you can go ahead and use a brush like the butt end of the 3D brush, the shape brush, or the blend brush, but I find most people love the coverage that this brush gives. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the small side of the buff brush, go into my main shade, and I'm just going to lightly tap and stipple around the eye and just very lightly press underneath. For my maturing skin clients, I recommend skipping the buff brush in the under eye area and instead using something like the spot brush, going into your base or your main foundation shade and then just kind of tapping your base color over top of the color correcting shade. This will keep the product very minimal and it will keep from adding extra fine lines or creasing under the eye. Now that we've got the under eyes taken care of, you can go ahead and flip to the larger end of the buff brush, go into your main foundation shade, and you can apply along the jawline, around the mouth, and the chin, and just kind of finish up your foundation coverage. I like to use the small side of the buff for the forehead area, and I use as minimal amount of product as possible, because I know a lot of us start to have those 11s or just the forehead lines right here, and so I just want to keep the product very minimal and light. Now on to our third highlight, which is our brightening highlight or concealer shade, and you can use the small side of the detail brush, and I always recommend just applying to the inner and the outer corners of the eye. If you have some crow's feet going on right here, or just fine lines, you can skip this part and you can just bring it down the side of the nose here. For my maturing skin clients, I recommend not going too light with your highlight. You really don't want it to be too much of a contrast or it can enhance your fine lines. And again, going in with the spot brush and only applying the tiny, tiniest amount right here. And if you want just a little right here, again, not wanting to enhance any fine lines or crow's feet that you have over on the outer part of the eye. Now we're gonna take our dampened sponge, make sure you run it underwater and keep squeezing and squeezing until it's double in size. Squeeze it between a towel so it's just damp, not wet. And we're just going to lightly tap and press and just blend any harsh lines or excess product. This is especially needed for under the eyes. Make sure you're just taking the tip and I'm just kind of tapping and pressing I am not swiping, that is the key. Along with it being damp, a dry sponge will just rip off all your makeup, okay? And then I like to take the butt end and I just kind of press upwards on my contour here, make sure it's nice and blended. If your makeup is coming off when you're blending with a sponge, it could be one of two things. It could be that you're just pushing or pressing too hard, or it may be that you have something on your skin underneath the makeup that is not allowing the makeup to sink in, or it could actually be a third thing. It could be um, that your shade might be a little bit too light, and when it's too light, it will just sit on top of the skin, and it won't blend and soak into the skin, and so then when you use a sponge, it's just gonna take it all right off because it's just sitting there. Let's go back to our blush and bronzer brush, and we're gonna go ahead and apply our lip and cheek color. This is Baby Watermelon, and I'm just gonna tap it right on my cheeks here. Now you've probably seen all these different trends of like blush placement, okay? And I simply say to apply blush that's going to 
give you the look that you want, all right? So if you want a fuller look in your face, you're gonna apply more on the apples of the cheeks, okay? And if you want a more lifted look, you can kind of bring it up here, but just make sure you stay outside of the eye area or it's gonna like cut into your eye and not look quite as natural and soft. Um, honestly, following just where you naturally have rosiness in your cheeks is always gonna be best. It's always gonna look most natural to apply where you have that rosiness. But like I said, just kind of right above the contour, you can bring it up just a little bit. And there you go. One thing to note with the Saint line, especially when it comes to their lip and cheek colors, is that they have satins, um, which is more like a matte, gloss, semi-gloss. I love the satins for more full coverage on the cheeks, but then I love to add in a gloss or a semi-gloss on the apples of the cheeks just to provide a little bit more of a glow to the skin. At this point in the application, I like to apply Illuminator. I prefer the creams. I love just the natural dewy glow that they provide. So this is Pearl. This is going to be really good for anyone that has a really fair skin tone like me. And you're just going to apply this to the high points of the face. So down the center of the nose, on the cupid's bow, right on top of the cheekbones here. Again, if you don't wanna accentuate any fine lines or crow's feet on this area, just stay away from the illuminator in that part of the face. And that's it, just adds like this extra beautiful glow to the- I forgot to fill in my brows after I did my brow wax. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I use the line brush. I also love to use the, the line brush for liner on the top or um, along the lash line. And I use a color called Cola Contour. And I always start by filling in towards the back of the brow. I never start in the front because you want the least amount of product there to get the most natural brow look. And I just do, I hold my brush a little bit at, at an angle and just do these little brow strokes. And then I flip it over and blend it out. Now, if you don't have microbladed brows or you need more structure to the brow, make sure you go check out my brow tutorial tab. And I have more tutorials on exactly how to fill in and shape your brow. Let's go ahead and do a lip color. I love to use Saint's uh, lip conditioner. I always put that on my lips first to make sure they're nice and hydrated. And then I'm going to take my multitasker brush, which is the brush that I used for spot treating and color correcting. and. I'm going to tap into my contour shade and use it as a lip liner. And we're just gonna start by lining along the lower part of the lip. And then if you want to create more of a full lip, especially if you have maturing skin and your lips have started to thin, you're going to stop right before the corner of the mouth and almost bring that lip line up a little bit like this. And then when you want to come up around the mouth, again, stay away from the corner and then do kind of these rounded strokes like so. See how this just creates a really nice fuller looking lip. And then I always create a custom lip color. I prefer mixing a satin shade like Plum or Nude. I always put that on as a base shade around my lip liner, and then I'll always fill it in with something a little warmer or pinker, um, and I do it with another satin shade or a semi-gloss for more shine. Okay, so I just mixed Plum and Baby Watermelon Plum first, and then I just added Baby Watermelon in the center. Such a beautiful mauve shade. That's what's so fun about these lip and cheek colors is you can literally like create whatever lip color you want. Our final step in the makeup application is to set the makeup. I love to use a setting spray, but if you have a more of oily skin or a shiny T-zone, what I recommend is spraying all over with the setting spray first, then you can take the vanilla dust or just whatever setting powder that you have, and you can take your sponge or you can take the buff brush. Um, I love the sponge and you can just kind of tap into the setting powder and then just press over any areas where there's just extra shine or if you just want extra staying power this is also great to use like in the summer when when it's hot and you're sweaty or if you're in a humid climate this will just help mat everything down and keep it in place for longer 
Okay, and that is how you apply your all-in-one 3D foundation makeup. Of course, as you're learning, there might be some things that you prefer or you like better. Um, and there's also, like I said, an adjustment period. Um, so if you're experiencing any issues or if you need any help with anything, you can always text me. <laughs> I'm here to help you. And please don't forget to watch the troubleshooting video that I have um, that I've also sent you in your email. And it's also in my Facebook guides and my Facebook group. And it's also on my website. Um, and on my Instagram. So there's lots of places where you can find more, more tutorials. And if you need more recommendations for lip and cheek colors or eyeshadows, or if the seasons have changed and you need a shade update, you can always message me and reach out. I'm here to help. And I'm just so excited for you to have this beautiful new makeup routine. And I know you're going to love it. Okay. And that is how you apply your 3d foundation. I hope you are feeling beautiful and flawless and be patient with yourself. Practice makes perfect. I've been doing this for years. So give your skin and yourself some time to learn these techniques and these tools. And please, 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 if you're not already come join my beauty group on Facebook, it's a private community where I do lives once a week. I have extremely helpful guides. It's so fun to connect with other women that are wearing the makeup and hear what they're loving or what's working for them. Um, and if you're experiencing any issues with it not lasting or if it's feeling shiny or greasy or anything, please reach out to me. Sometimes colors need to be adjusted. It's a super easy fix. Um, and I also have a really great um, troubleshooting video on my website and my Facebook guides um, on Instagram. So anyway, like I said, I'm here to help and I know that you're really gonna love this makeup as you start to play around with it more. So thank you for being my customer and thanks for being here.